Hello, my name is Bernie Thompson and I'm president of Automotive Test Solutions. Today, we have a 2009 Chevrolet Silverado with a 5.3 liter V8. This engine has a mill lamp on and it runs rough at idle. It also has a little bit of a low power under load. We're going to need to diagnose this quickly and accurately, so we want to be able to diagnose the car by the time we drive around the block. In order to do this, we're going to use the eScan Elite. This tool has some special functionality that your shop needs. You're going to see this as we move through this diagnosis. Let's go take a look at the vehicle. This is our problem, child. So let's drive around the block so we can get this diagnosed in order to quickly and accurately diagnose this vehicle, we're going to use the eScan Elite. The eScan Elite is going to give you some scan tool functionality that's not found in any other scan tool, but it's functionality that you need every day in your shop. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we just want to look at basic DTCs. So let's do that. We're going to open up the DTC window. It says that bank one is lane, bank one is rich, bank two is lane, an undefined code, and it has a cylinder deactivation code. Now you could get really confused by this code set. What I want you to always do is we always diagnose by the, by the symptom, not by the code. What's wrong with the car? The customer brought it in, it's got a rough runningness, it idle, and it loses power under wide open throttle. That's our problem. Now when we got a bank one and bank two lean code, this car is lean. So that's where I want to start my diagnostics. I want to be looking at the fuel control system. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the sharpshooter. We're going to go to the fuel trim table and we're going to start the trim table. What this is going to do is it's going to load two tables and it's going to load them by the fuel trim from bank one and bank two. It's going to load by the fuel being applied, throttle position, load by RPM. We're going to load this table as we go up, and once we load this table, we're going to have a better understanding of what's wrong with the car. Now, that's only a piece of it. We're going to need to do a volumetric efficiency test. That's the engine's pumping ability, and then we're going to compare them. We'll take a look at that as we move through this testing diagnostics. The first thing is we need to go drive the car, and we want to see how the table loads always pay real close attention to whether the trims are taking away or adding fuel and what loads and what cells that's occurring in because that's going to tell me exactly what's wrong with the car. Let's go ahead and take a quick test drive. We're going to go ahead and drive the vehicle and we're going to go ahead and accelerate. I want to go and slowly just accelerate the, pot, the car through its range. Now we want to go ahead and pull over and look at this data. Now we need to look at the data that we've just loaded on our test drive. We're going to look at the total fuel trim, and once we look at the screen, we're going to see that we move from a minus 21 to a plus 43. So we're taking away a lot of fuel at the light load, and we're adding a heavy amount at the top end or under heavy load. In the middle, notice, that we have good numbers, plus two, plus three, that's not a problem. But we're transferring from a heavy minus to a heavy plus. Now this would make me think that something's wrong with the mass air sensor, like it's dirty. But we won't know that until we run another test. What we need to do now is we need to shut this test off and we're gonna start the volumetric efficiency test. Once we start the VE test, it's going to ask me some simple data and we're going to answer that that was okay once we know that that's true. Now we're going to drive this car from sitting here and we start to roll a couple of miles an hour and we're going to floor the car to wide open. We're going to do a pull through first gear and we're going to look at what this engine's capability is for pumping air compared to what the mass air sensor is reporting that pumping capability. Let's run that test. So in order to run this test, we're going to let off the brake and just start to roll, and then we're going to roll into the throttle quickly. We want it wide open. We want to pull clear through first gear. And then when it's safe, we're going to pull over and we're going to analyze the data that we've collected so far. Now we need to look at the data. 
This is the volumetric efficiency. That's how much air the engine can pump. That's shown by the yellow trace. The yellow trace is representative of the mass airflow sensor. That's the data that's being collected from the mass sensor goes to the microprocessor and the scan tool reads that. That's given in grams per second. The red trace is a theoretical model. That means that mathematically, you know if this was a six liter engine and it rolled two crank revolutions, it would pump six liters of air. That would be 100% VE. Now each engine has a different model. This engine's actually been scaled. That means that we've modeled this particular engine and so we know how much air it should pump. Now the difference between actual VE and theoretical VE is way different. These two lines should be laying right on top of each other. The difference between the yellow and red is given on the chart and we basically are going 25 to 63. So we have a big difference. What we need to do now is we need to compare the fuel trim and we can go back to the trim. We can look and we have a large add and then we can look at the air and the air comes up and we've got a big difference. Now is what we want to do is we want to run a test to where we compare the two and that's what this test is going to do. And what we can see is that through the whole middle it's green. That means that we're comparing the actual VE to the fuel trim and they're laying almost right on top of each other. Now at the very top what this is indicative is that the air got so bad that the fuel trim can't make up for it. So this is a problem with the air side of the system more particularly with the mass sensor especially with the negative numbers going positive that would indicate to me something like the mass air is dirty or it's bad but this is definitely something to do with the mass air. What we're going to need to do is put a scope on this car and check the electronic circuit. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that we are done diagnosing this vehicle with a scan tool and we've determined that the mass air sensor has a problem, we're going to need to check the circuit integrity of that sensor. In order to do that, we're going to use an oscilloscope. We're going to use the eScope Pro and we're going to connect it the, to the mass air sensor to check the power, ground, and signal. Once we know that the power and ground and signal are good, then we can make a determination on what we're going to do with this sensor. Let's connect the scope. First, we're going to connect the scope ground lead to the battery negative post. This is the only acceptable place to connect the ground when we first start to work on a car. It will be the lowest point of potential. We're going to connect the mass air sensor. We're going to just back probe it. So we're going to go down and we're going to just get all the wires. And then we're going to look at the signals to see what's present. We're looking for the power, ground, and signals that are supplied from this unit. We need to see if we've made the connections and we can see by these lights right here that are in the gray that all of the leads that we've connected yellow, red, green, blue, and white are connected. The leads that we haven't connected have the circuit detection indicating that they're not connected. Our scopes all have circuit detection so you know if you've back probed properly or not. Now that we know that the mass error is properly connected, we need to start the vehicle. What we want to look at is the signals. We've got the blue, which is the power, we got the yellow, which is the ground, and we've got the green, which is the signal being produced from the MAF sensor. GM uses a frequency-based MAF sensor. The frequency is equal to the gram weight of air that's sent into the PCM. Now I can see that all of these are good. What I want to do is I always want to snap the throttle and make sure that everything is okay and none of the signals are breaking down. This MAF sensor looks good. The signals are all there and no one broke down. What we're going to need to do now is to take that MAF sensor out and see if it's dirty or see if the MAF sensor needs to be replaced. So let's take a look at that.
to take the sensor out now and take a look at it. There's definitely some dirt on that sensor. It doesn't look quite dirty enough to give me my problem I've got, but since it is dirty, we're going to clean it and then we'll retest it. So I'm going to use alcohol and a Q-tip. When you use a Q-tip, you can lightly rub the sensor and you can make sure that you free it of any debris or any oxidation on the sensor. CRC, WINS, BG, they make a spray application to clean these. Those also work good. I just prefer using uh, an alcohol base. Now many mass air sensors aren't real cleanable, but the type of sensors that GM Toyota, Lexus, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury use. These have a glass ceramic aluminum material and these sensors are pretty robust and they do get dirty and you can clean them. So we definitely want to try to clean this GM sensor because I've had some pretty good success with this. So let's go ahead and clean it. Now that we've cleaned the sensor, we're going to go ahead and put it back in so we can take it for a test drive and see if the vehicle's fixed or not. Now that we've cleaned the sensor, we need to check it. And it's really quick and easy to do. We're going to go to Sharpshooter, we're going to go to the volumetric efficiency, and we're going to just start the test. We're going to know that the data parameters are set correctly, and now we're going to go ahead and give the system a test. Let's drive it. We're going to go ahead and run the test. We're going to do the same thing as we did before. Go ahead and roll into it. Hold it wide open. Pull first gear, and then we're going to pull over. I can already tell the car is fixed. It's running way better. It's making more power, and the pull from the car was quite good. Let's take a quick look at the VE data set now. The VE data set, you can see the yellow, that is the signal that's being produced from the mass air sensor to the computer and the computer is giving that to my scan tool in grams per second. The red trace is a theoretical air flow rate or an engine model that's made by our scan tool. You can see that the two are overlaying each other right now and you can see that the difference over here between yellow and red is green. This car's fixed. Cleaning that MAF sensor, fix the vehicle. Now what the eScan Elite gives your shop the ability to do is to clean a sensor and give it back to your customer with confidence you know it's fixed. Normally, the shop would have to replace the sensor because you wouldn't want the car to come back. But then the customer's bill is way bigger and they're unhappy. This way the car is fixed, it's a little bit less, so the customer is going to bring your shop back the real money makers, the brakes, fluid changes, belts, hoses. That's where my shop makes its money and I'm sure so does yours. With the eScan Pro and the eScan Elite, your shop can make real money because you can fix the car right the first time.